I have this deal in a journal in my phone about tactics in battle. It's really a picture and, it, and it, it's from a general. One must differentiate between strategic or tactical boldness and a military gamble. A bold operation is one in which success is not a certainty, but which in case of failure leaves sufficient forces to cope with whatever situation may arise. Okay, you gotta remember we're picking 104. So you're basically picking second to last pick in third round. A gamble, on the other hand, is an operation which can lead either to victory. Hey, Super Bowl was nice. Them picks is nice. Little whatever cache deal, that's all fun. Or to the complete destruction of one's force. We say we pick one of these guys at 104. What do we need to do, right, to continue contending and try to figure out ways to, to get an edge? That would be the ideal scenario. Things change fast and rapidly in this league, and you better know that the other 31 are hunting too. Reckless and irresponsible eight years without a first round pick. Did they pay too much? I agree with you. They paid too much. The Rams today now have eight draft picks with an excellent scouting department. The Los Angeles Rams select. The thing that winning a Super Bowl does can make the draft a little bit easier. That does mean you have a lot of core players that have solidified their roles. And at the end of the day, the needs, the wants become a lot more specific. And we've probably narrowed it down and we'll go through each position. But before we get rolling, what I do want to start with everybody in the room, the last month's been a blast for me for many reasons. When we got this going again, it was pretty cool. 761 days, I think. How many days? 732, draft room dormant. But what was really neat through this last month is whether it was starting at the combine or a pro day, we started looking at players as a group in October. And at that point, right, this board began to move up and down. This is the fun stage in that we have our board aligned, fine-tuned, but now it's really that moment where you go, okay, which 25 to 30 players do we really want to come away with? It all starts with probably right here with the area scout. And through the fall, this overall average is really what the board is. I always call it, that's our unbiased grade. I think once we set an initial draft board, we sit with our coaching staff and do you agree or not? And, and then once we get through that, we try to do our best to acquire them. Any thoughts on that, Teddy? Uh, Wait a minute. The meetings are really constructive. You might have somebody might bring up a point that you didn't think about, that they see, that are going to make you look at it different. I think they're point driven in terms of what we're looking for in a player to help the Rams be successful and the type of people that we have that we talk about who are built for the Rams. I think that's really important that we stay on that course and that's what happens in those meetings. He knows how to work. Uh, it's just going to be our responsibility to work with him uh, develop them on the field, not the field, in terms of his overall growth as a man, as a player. So, but he's he's one of those guys that's going to meet you halfway, and that's when you have a chance. You have a chance when guys will meet you halfway. You don't when they won't. Hey, Les, I saw the same kind of thing. I mean, it seems like he's a really driven kid. He may not project that well, but you know, he's he's kind of diamond in the rough. I mean, it seems like he's got a really high ceiling. Sliding back up. Yes, we've had a lot of success with, if you want to call them mid to late rounders, it's kind of allowed us to come in and be a little bit more innovative, a little bit more creative to, to gain an edge. Now let's talk about trying to find the remaining pieces. The Rams don't pick in the top 100. 2022 marks the sixth consecutive draft without a first round selection. I would imagine that they're sitting there going, can we continue to draft really well in those middle to later rounds? That's what their general manager, Les Snead, has done such a remarkable job of. We have a scouting department who is certainly accustomed 
and comfortable with the circumstance and embraces both an unflinching and agile mindset. But if you look at the way that they have drafted over the past couple years, one of the best receivers in football, Cooper Cup, Ernest Jones was such a big player for them last year. Greg Gaines is such a big player for them. Those are guys that have been drafted in the third round or later. When we're picking through rounds three, four, five, six, and seven, really what you're able to do is spread yourself a little bit deeper into the draft that allows us the luxury of focusing on really sound football players at those spots. Looking back at their draft history, and you're seeing a lot of players that have become contributors on this roster that were fourth rounders, Joe Noteboom, Brian Allen, the center. It might be you're drafting an offensive lineman specifically to groom. That does now allow someone like Joe Noteboom for him when he got a chance stepping up. Like, you know what, let's re-sign Joe. Yeah, I think you need to look at the secondary, too, and they've gone and they got Taylor Rapp, they got Jordan Fuller, Terrell Burgess. They've got good players in the secondary. And I give our coaching staff credit, having the fortitude to rely on lesser experienced players and having that fortitude, right, allows us to pencil Jordan Fuller in the starting lineup and, hey, maybe he'll intercept the goat on Monday Night Football. I was drafted 199, too. Don't forget that. I think it sort of gets lost in the F those picks shuffle that what they're doing is not just like lobbing draft picks everywhere, but the reality is the Rams method has worked out. It might be perceived as boldness. It may be perceived as doing something different. It might even be unconventional, untraditional, but it does mean you better know that the other 31 are hunting too. Next time on Inside the Draft. Let's really get our ducks in a row so we're not pressing the panic button here in about eight picks. We need we need this lineman. This lineman, we, we need a starter. I mean, if this Russ guy goes before, we got the biggest luck ever.